Stewart's coming for this one. It is a 90 second minute equaliser. Good morning, everybody. It's Boxing Day and it's Vlog Day and it is one of those rare occasions where we get first against second. It's Ipswich versus Leicester in the Championship. And it's tonight. Record-breaking Leicester lead the way in the division and could be set to go over the 60-point mark tonight. We've only just passed halfway. Despite having only just been promoted from League One last season, Ipswich have competed incredibly with the year one parachute teams up at the top of the table currently lying second but the pressure is on it was a hefty defeat at the hands of Leeds last time out and Leeds and Southampton both play before Ipswich kick off tonight and the gap could be as low as four points before this game even gets started. It is Boxing Day, though, and the celebrating and the eating hasn't finished yet. I've got more food and drink to consume and more family to see first. I am just going to quickly get my Fan Hub 5 predictions done. And yes, I have gone for Southampton to close the gap. Might take me a few minutes longer to do my predicted 11, second-guessing Kieran McKenna. The Ipswich manager hasn't proven to be easy for me this season. Right, that is Christmas round 15 done and I've just put on another three pounds. Family stuff done. Off we go to Ipswich ahead of the 3 p.m.'s big result in the 12.30 with Leeds losing at Preston. We'll see what impact that has, but Southampton up next. Let's head to Ipswich. And we have touched down in Ipswich. Nice journey. Got to say, the Christmas Day A14 was a little bit nicer than the Boxing Day A14. I've gone via an errand at the local recording studio. But we're here now in town, about to walk down to the ground. Southampton won 5-0. They're now 16 unbeaten. What that means at the top, a Leicester win puts them nine points clear. An Ipswich win would put them seven points clear. But if Ipswich don't score any points today, Southampton are within four points of the Tractor Boys. That's the closest it will have been at the top for a fair wee while. Let's get down to Portman Road. That's team news in my standard 10 out of 11 on the Fan Hub Predictor feature. I had Wolfenden coming in and Taylor coming in. I did not have Harness in for Broadhead, but the surprise for me. But as I said, second guessing Kieran McKenna ain't easy and playing Leicester. Ain't easy, so, so strong. Winks in front of Cody there. Dewsbury Hall in with Ndidi. They get forward, front three. Fatawu, Daka, Mavadidi. So strong, I've said for the longest time, Leicester are not a normal relegated team. Let's see if they prove that. Tonight, we're just under an hour to kick off. Here we go then, high roads are all going for the TV. Players are out. Ipswich v Leicester, let's get this one over with. Coming up, 10 gone, nil nil. Ipswich sort of control the first five, trying to make the pace frantic. Leicester are trying to play slow and calm. They're just kind of taking control in that way. Now, a couple of chances from corners, nothing else doing. Nil nil, 10 just ticking up on the clock. Uh, 20 gone, still nil nil, but George Hurst out for Ipswich. A nice hamstring, hopefully not too severe. Twenty-four on the clock, and that was coming. I have to say, Leicester have just got into their stride. They get a row of five across the front. They've been spreading Ipswich's back line really wide. Tried to hold their position and stay narrow. Load of space for Mavadidi though. Steps inside, bends it into the far corner, and the league leaders, Leicester, lead this game. 1-0, Mavadidi, 24. Oh, goodness me. Ipswich just had a decent spell. Nearly conceded again. Then Clark giveaway. And, and Didi's in. Just manages to win it back at the last minute. On a bit of a razor's edge. Another good chance for Leicester. And Ipswich loose in centre midfield. Giving the ball away again. Dakar's in. Good save. Like he won the one. 
half time can't come quickly enough half time then Ipswich nil Leicester one I mean the scoreline says Ipswich are in the game but there were times in that half Leicester completely in control goalkeeper at centre back left back in central midfield and five across the front is tricky to play against and that level of player too I don't think Ipswich have faced a side in possession as good as I've seen Leicester this season but as I say they're in the game there is Broadhead to use off the bench a shame Hurst went off injured that is a blow but let's see how this pans out second half Leicester in control in the lead only one goal in it if it's nil Leicester one Oh, a chance early in the second half. It's only 46 50 on the clock. Davis corner. Burgess near post. Huge strapping centre back. Heads it over the bar. Nice flow to the second half. 53 gone. Chances for both sides back and forth. Famous last words, but dare say we haven't seen the last of the goal scoring. 1 0, 53 gone. This is just still in this one. Still 1 0, Leicester. A um, couple of yellow cards have come out. Indeed, he's gone off. Cassidy's come on. And um, I suppose from Liverpool's point of view, the longer they stay in it, the more chance of getting something from this. 1 0, Leicester. Oh, it's just putting the pressure on. Two chances for Chaplin. One with a right foot in open play. One from the recycled corner with the left. One chip round the post, one over the bar. McKenna's still not going to the bench for Ipswich. Ian Acho in for Leicester. 20 to play still. Only one goal in it, 1-0 Leicester. Well, Dewsbury Hall has had his second penalty claim of the game, and this one looked a lot more solid than the one in the first half. He's pretty much in on goal, chasing through on a counter, and I think it's Wolfman that possibly clipped his heels there. Not sure why that wasn't given, but it wasn't, and the score stays at 1-0 Leicester, 75 gone. Last up for Ipswich then, Ladapo in. Leicester still look nice and relaxed. Ipswich still can't force a big chance despite plenty of possession. 87 30 on the clock, 1 0 Leicester. Brilliant run by Hutchison right into the box there. Ladapo has the shot block corner, Ipswich, and they have wasted it. We're into five minutes to stop his time. And we have landed back in Bedfordshire. Plenty of time on the road to reflect on Ipswich 1, Leicester 1. We'll try and look at it from a Leicester view and Ipswich view. But to focus in on the game first, obviously when a game has a late equaliser, that tends to be all you kind of think about. But um, you do have to kind of wind back to halfway in this game where things honestly did look like they were going to trend in a rather different way. As an Ipswich fan, I was happy to just be in the game at half time and hope that something could be done. Um, it's kind of exactly what happened in the end. So it kind of played out in sort of the best case scenario, really, from an Ipswich fan's point of view, from 45 to sort of 93 when the goal went in in the end. In the first half, really impressed with um, Leicester for a couple of spells. They looked very much like the best sort of in-possession team I've seen facing Ipswich this season. But they only got the one goal, didn't they? In the second half, huffing and puffing from both teams. Obviously, big penalty shout for Leicester on Dewsbury Hall. Didn't get given. And then I will say... From an Ipswich point of view then, they really did trend up towards the end of the game. And this is a League One promoted side against the Leicester side with just a squad full of 5, 10, 20, 30, you name it, million pound players. And they were brave. They went for it. And I think in the end, they probably deserved the goal at that point in the game. Obviously, that's not quite the same as they deserved a draw 
throughout the entirety of the match. But um, the story is a 90-minute game. And in that respect, I guess the point was a worthy one. And as I'm saying, at that point in the game, when the goal went in, it did feel morally that they kind of earned it then. Not to say they couldn't have lost the game in various different ways throughout, if you know what I am saying. Look, from a Leicester point of view, I just cannot fathom how that squad, and they'll probably sign a couple of players in January, from this position now cannot finish first or at the barest minimum get promoted. I will be so surprised, clip that out, if Leicester don't get promoted. I'm probably a good person to ask because I've seen Leicester twice. I saw them on the first Day of the season, they beat Coventry 2-0, 2-1, 2-1. Can't remember the scoreline, but they won and it wasn't quite convincing. They hadn't got um, Maresca's system going yet. And the transition to today where when it was working, the two sort of periods of 10 minutes in the first half where they were really at it and the keepers playing centre-back and the right-backs playing central midfield and this five pretty much strung across the front, you can see how that is just going to wipe the floor with a lot of teams in the Championship when you factor in um, that Premier League quality that Leicester have built up from their long run up at the top level. So I assume Leicester will go on and win the division or at a bare minimum get promoted in second place. And um, yeah, I would say Leeds have been the best kind of attacking team in terms of individual quality and just, you know, ripping through it through this season. Um, Leicester, the best in possession. I think I'm stealing a phrase from one of Kieran McKenna's post-match interviews that I've listened to on the way back. So I would still say West Brom in terms of a complete performance against um, Ipswich. have really controlled Ipswich um, in in the most significant way with, with their sort of press and just playing the games on their turn. But uh, yeah. Leicester are going to be all right would be my um, would be my conclusion and I'm not really sticking my neck out there and there are many other ways um, this game could have gone where Leicester um, get a second goal and go on and, and win the game. From an Ipswich point of view I'm just really really pleased there's a couple of reasons why I'm really pleased one and again I'll talk about Kieran McKenna's post-match stuff is that McKenna made a point of saying they've stuck to their principles. Um, a, li a small um, kind of bit of criticism. Why didn't he go to Leeds and park the bus? And um, he's just underlining that's not what this club is going to do. Under him, they're going to go. They work day in, day out on this pattern of play and this philosophy of play. And they're going to do that, whether they're playing Leicester, who are top of the league, whether they're playing Rotherham, who are bottom of the league, home, away, three-game week, whatever, they're going to play this way. And I think he feels very vindicated that he's drawn against this team that are record-breaking pace setters at the top of the league. That's one reason I'm really happy. The, the other is that this is the end, and you'll have heard me use this term on this channel and on the Blue Monday channel as well. This is the end of the hateful eight. Just a really horrible run of fixtures, disproportionately... I know um, you get these kind of bland comments, oh, you've got to play everybody twice. Yeah, go figure. But you cannot, you're being dishonest if you ignore disproportionately difficult runs of games in your season. That can really set the tone and uh, pull momentum back and forward. And Ipswich, in this eight-game run, they've played West Brom away, played Middlesbrough away, played Watford away, they've played Leeds away, played Leicester at home and Norwich at home as well, with all the emotion that brings. It's all the parachute teams as well, other than Southampton in that run. They've got 14 points. They've got the run done. I think at the start of the run, it was an eight-point cushion they had. That is now a five-point cushion over Southampton, who are 16 unbeaten now in flying form in this crazy promotion race. It's an eight-point lead over Leeds. And I said at the start of this run, any type of... Um, Total that's anywhere near two points per game would be amazing. Any type of lead, therefore, would be amazing. And they've managed to get through. Um, and now, look, <laughs> they could mess it up in the quote, easier on paper games, but they've got through a really difficult run. And again, as I say, ticked off away games against um, Leeds, Middlesbrough, Watford, 
West Brom all in this run. So um, fantastic in that respect. Um, as I mentioned, in terms of the league table, so Leicester are still miles clear at the top. Um, not really. I think 11 points is, is their gap. Forgive me if I've got that wrong. Uh, Ipswich, as I said, five points. Gap to Southampton and eight down to Leeds. Just magical considering again this is a league one team last season in the midst of three year one parachute teams there you go that is my take on the game today um if you check in my fan hub fives not the best two out of five that's not how the meatloaf song goes is it so thank you to southampton and liverpool were the only picks i got correct there uh, make sure you download the fan hub app go and play yourself you need my golden ticket code ben hyphen cu7 I'm going to be hosting the Blue Monday podcast uh, tomorrow night, which will be today as you're watching it. In fact, it's gone midnight, so it'll be today um, by whatever terms you're looking at it. So go and check that out. And I will put a link, if I point the right direction, up there for the Blue Monday channel. If you want to chat to me live and hear a bit more of a um, sort of a detailed breakdown on the game I have just watched, which finished, which won. Leicester won.